Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Dyson Corral versus two GHD straighteners. So I'm going to be comparing and reviewing, I suppose, and contrasting between the price, what they do, how long they last, um, the quality, all that sort of, sort of stuff. So let's get straight into the video. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe because I am starting Vlogmas, which will mean a video every single day until the 11th of January. Yes, you heard it here. Some people do 10 days of Vlogmas, 12 days of uh, Vlogmas, 24 days of Vlogmas. Me, I'm doing like 37. We won't worry about it. Okay, so while I'm talking through what they do and comparison and stuff, I'm actually gonna show you them in motion because I have to straighten my hair. So my hair is actually not too bad at the moment because I blow dried it, but I didn't blow dry it like dead straight. Sometimes it's like a full on, like horizontal fur ball and it's just all over the place. It's not a vibe. And so it's not too bad. So I will put in some videos here that I've taken with the Dyson of it, like straighten my hair when it's been very bad. And I've also some first impressions of when the Dyson first came in my door and of me curling my hair. So I won't curl it now because I'll have to like curl and breathe straight over it. So I'll pop all of those clips in throughout the video as well. I wish I recorded that. I was like, I won't record my first go because I definitely would make balls out of it. My first ever attempt at doing a curl with a straightener and this is what I get. One of the reasons I was like, this is going to be good is because it has no cord. And usually I'd be getting my whole setup tangled up. But I have never had a successful curl with a strainer, ever in my whole life. I've often got like a little flick or a whatever. And most of the time my hair would get stuck in it. I'd be pulling it down. I'd, there'd be like flames coming out of it and frazzling the end. This is like a perfect bouncy curl. One of the things as well that I loved, well, what I heard in the reviews. It has like flexing plates and like a little comb in it. So it's like combing your hair and... Okay, let's do another one so you can see that I actually did do this myself. There, I think. Oh my god. This is brilliant, guys. It really, really is. And I just love, there's no steam coming out of it. I have it on the lowest setting and I'm still getting this. Like, you can hold the edge as well. I'm going to have to, like, straighten over this to loosen it a bit and straighten the ends. Because I'm going for, like, a boho wave. Hey, here. I think I might be sold already, guys. I actually think I might be sold, but I'll let you know. This is what it looks like when it's charging. So it literally just pops into this like little charger, makes a noise, which is nice for a bit of reassurance. And then this is just like a little magnetic thing that clips on. Excuse the state of my chair next to me, but my hair went from this the straightest it's ever been like look at that like usually when i'd straighten my hair i'd get like the flick in just because my hair is so short that it would like i don't know why it's flicking out here but usually it would flick in but with this when i straighten it it goes dead straight and stays straight it's just unbelievable i don't know how it works but by god it works and it works well and it literally does make it not a hairdresser so i have no idea why this would be the case but usually i'd get like a week out of my washing my hair like i add in dry shampoo but ever since i started using this i feel like it's not even getting greasy at all like i can nearly go the week without using dry shampoo and i don't know maybe it's because when i actually do style my hair with it it lasts so much longer so i'm not like brushing it or touching it or like going at it every day like there was one day i woke up got out of bed and literally went to the supermarket with my hair straightened for like two days before and i didn't even this is our finished product it just gives the look and the feel of like a sl silky sleek straight blow dry that you get out of hairdressers and that's like what i've heard a lot of people say about the air wrap too like if you like a bouncy blow dry from the hairdresser first things first let's turn them both on so we have the dyson in here charging and then turning on the ghg Pl platinum plus so that's what we're going to be reviewing today now for on our first impressions of what they feel like weight wise and i suppose shape wise and all the rest of it this is the platinum ghd plus if you compare it to the other ghd that i have the um this one is from the pink collection i think they're both in and around like 270 euro they both feel way way lighter this one's very light i love this one for traveling but it does feel like cheaper and more plasticky this one still has that kind of plasticky lightweight feel but it does have kind of that um metal hardware and then if you compare them both to the dyson they're completely different 
I'm gonna say the Dyson weighs about five times as much as the GHD. So if you're someone with really long or thick hair and it takes you ages to straighten your hair, that might turn you off the Dyson, but at the same time, I find that this straightens a lot more fast. Um, and kind of efficiently than the GHD so you wouldn't spend as much time but definitely do um, go in and kind of feel it first because it is very heavy. Now the main I suppose selling point of the Dyson Corral is that it is cordless and for me the main thing for me is that you could still use it when it's plugged in because it actually does run out after about 25 30 minutes um, and I was like surely I don't have to like plug it and leave it charge and use it again so the fact that you can use it with a cord or without a cord and it has a really nice like wireless charging posh thing as well it's really cool that had me sold I was like okay that's fine so but it is quite heavy but even though it's heavy because when it has no cord on it, it makes doing curls very easy. Cause I was like, oh, it's very heavy. Like, is that gonna make doing curls really hard? And like, will I be burning myself? But because it's so heavy and because it's so thick, it's very hard to burn yourself off it. Like you can hold the top cause there's those little kind of lips. Um, I just wouldn't recommend holding the um, rose gold parts, but like you can kind of hold all around it and it doesn't get that hot. Whereas with the GHG, I found that it got a lot hotter. This also has three heat settings, 165, 185 and 210, and I always kind of stay at the lowest. Whereas with both of the GHGs, neither of them have a heat setting on it. And I think with the GHG I had before, the quite thick one, um, I think that it did have a heat setting. But what I just want to show you is, when I'm straightening my hair with the GHG, there's like, steam coming out of it which you'll see which is normal for a straightener or a flat iron but with the Dyson one there's literally no steam and even though it's hot and it's heated it just doesn't feel as hot or that it's doing as much damage even when it's on the middle setting and one of the things that kind of annoys me about the GHG is that I can see it like I can see the steam coming out of it and I can nearly feel it frazzing my hair. Now I do use some heat protectant but another thing about the GHG, now even though I do get the same finished effect as I do with the Dyson which is dead straight hair and I do reach for this when I have to, when the Dyson's not fully charged or if I like want to fly through my hair super fast and I don't want to go to a lot of effort but you definitely need to keep running over it with the GHG um, unless you want to hold it for longer and harder and kind of I suppose use more heat on it whereas I find with the dice that I can run it through once and it'll get like that so I'll just show you there so I'm after running over that about three times now with the GHD with the Dyson you can do it in now you do have to do the Dyson a bit slower just because it's heavier but it's a lot more powerful so like if I pull this down in one go it's gonna be literally dead straight. One pro of the GHG that would be considered a con for the Dyson though is because this is so thick at the side you can't always get it fully into your scalp whereas with this one you can get it really close to your scalp and your neck but you definitely do feel the heat through with that a little bit more. I find the GHG much easier for doing the back of my hair because again it's so much lighter but I feel like with the GHG I would just literally get myself into such a tangled mess even though at least this one actually has the rotating cord which definitely helps. My original GHG that I had day one didn't so I literally was untangling myself constantly. I feel like it's kind of distracting when I'm actually doing my hair but let's talk about another aspect of this which is obviously the price. These retail for around 270 I think they're on sale for 180 at the moment whereas the Dyson is a solid 500 or 450 if you can get it on sale and like I said one of the ma major selling points of the Dyson is that it's like this major technology it's like made out of the same stuff as hoovers and air conditionings whereas the GHD is mostly hair technology with this because it's cordless I presume that's another reason why they made the price so much but when you feel it you can kind of, it and even by looking at it it kind of looks like a laptop or something another aspect of it that definitely sold to me was the plates have like mini combs in it so it's like brushing your hair while you're straightening and I can definitely vouch for that feature because I have went to sleep after straightening my hair with the Dyson woke up the next morning and not even brushed my hair and went out and it's looked perfect um, and I've had similar effects with the GHD but it definitely just has those more basic um straightener plates as opposed to these ones and these actually flex as well which is not that important for straightening but for curling your hair it's brilliant because it like moves with you which is 
unbelievable. Another thing is I find that this definitely gives less heat damage and I get more of a shiny effect with my hair afterwards and not that much static. There's actually not that much static with either of them I'll say but with this one I definitely do and I don't know if it's just the aspect of seeing the kind of steam coming out of it but I definitely feel like my hair feels a little bit drier after using this as opposed to with this. If I'm gonna, because I do use them both, like I said, I do use this for if I'm running out the door or if I need to fix up my hair quicker because it's so easy and light to kind of whip around. But if I want to sit down properly, I'm just after coming out of the shower, blow drying my hair, I'll usually sleep on my hair then just to kind of flatten it a bit and then I'll straighten it the next day and do it in sections and stuff. I'll use this because once I use this, I don't have to touch my hair for the week. It, my hair stays straight for the week once I use the Dyson. I wouldn't even have to brush it for the week if I didn't have to. And because I'm at it less then with my hands and with product and with steam, um, it's not getting as damaged heat wise, but also it's not getting as greasy. I can usually get about five to seven days out of my hair because I hair trained it before. Since I started using the Dyson, I can get like up to 10 because I'm literally doing my hair once every 10 days and barely touching it again. So that's another thing that I really, really like about this. It's definitely really great for um, someone maybe with bleached hair or someone who gets blow dries a lot. It's definitely worth the money in that aspect. It's worth the investment. I was wondering if I run a drawer on a straightener, if you are someone who puts a lot of money into their hair care, their hair products, if you're bleaching your hair every six or eight weeks for 100 to 200 euro, you want to be using good products to keep it in that pristine condition. Whereas if you're someone who's not that fostered, doesn't do their hair that often, and one like this is absolutely perfect and like I said I still do use this I just think that this is particularly brilliant for me because I used to get a literal a wash and blow dryer anytime I had an occasion every weekend and that was like 25 30 euro pop so you add up that and then break down your cost per use with this for 500 I'm actually saving money and I'm getting the same kind of um, effect that I get from getting a wash and blow in the hair dressers and I've never had that experience with any other straighteners including GHDs. I've actually had a hairdresser use a steam pot on me before and I was blown away. It was very similar effect to this but again I didn't use it on myself. The hairdresser used it on me so I'm not sure if I would have been able to do that good but um, steam pot is definitely another option for you look into. I'm just gonna do a little time lapse and speed up my hair again. I'll do more on this side and some more on this side so you can kind of compare. I should also mention what each one comes with so for your 270 you get the strainer and you get this gorgeous like luxurious velvet green box and what I love about this is that it's a storage box that you can have the Dyson actually doesn't come with that it does come in a really cool like black sleek kind of box that you'd get with a macbook you know like slide it out but it's not really one you could keep it as a storage box but this one is one that you want to keep so I wish the Dyson did do something like that that's I don't know, a protective box that looks nice that you want to actually hang on to. And then inside you just get this little nozzle for it. I don't think there was any heat mat that came with the GHD actually. And then with the Dyson, you get the Dyson, the um, wireless cord for charging it, and then the wireless, or sorry, the stand for charging it, which is very cool. I'll pop in a picture of it here. And then this velvet kind of luxury heat mat, mat that you can roll up into it for um, storage. It does have this thing that I actually don't know what it's for. It has like an airplane on it. I don't know, maybe it's like for keeping it closed on a plane and then there's like an airplane thing here too. So I presume they like connect in some way, shape or form. But yeah, that's what the uh, products actually come with for your money. So I'm just gonna give my hair a little brush through. Apparently you need to actually go over your hair less with the straightener if it's brushed well with like a fine comb, which is something I never knew before. So let's start with the Dyson this time on this side. So I'm just going to take this piece at the very front. Now even though you only need one pass, I always end up going over it twice just because that's what I'm used to doing with all of my other straighteners. But like you'll see here, there's no steam coming out of it. It doesn't feel like my face is going to burn off of me. And when you're pulling it down, it just goes very smoothly. Now there was a little bit of steam there because I'm holding it so long, but definitely no amount of steam compared to the GHD. And like it's, I said, it has that flexing pad at the end, so you can kind of flick in the edges if you want, or else if you don't want to have a little flick, if you don't want to have a little flick, just make sure that you hold it completely dead straight when you come to the ends, rather than um, kind of bending it in. Because with those flexing plates, it actually is easier to get a twist on it, even accidentally. So very important to be careful with it, to get the finished effect that you want to go with. Because the Dyson is more powerful as well, I often find I can do bigger chunks of hair in 
like per section whereas with the ghd i definitely find that i'm doing smaller sections but i do run through my hair quicker if that makes sense aside like there isn't a major difference at the end of the day a straightener is a straightener and i think that's why some people have such a big um thing against why is it 500 drawer which is I completely understand it is a strainer it does what a straightener does but I think it is worth investing in if you want to like see that there those creases that's how hot that this is like this is on one um steam setting and when I pulled that through at the same speed as the Dyson I just got like shiny sleek hair here whereas I have like kind of lines there of like burn so I'll have to like go through to go over it again to try kind of even if you see what I mean like when I'm using the GHG it's very lightweight I'm able to fly through it but it's really hot I'm not really using I'm not really like focusing on a particular area it's even hurts when I touch it which I find kind of uncomfortable like it does burn my hand and burn my neck and I'm like if it's like that on my skin what's it doing to my hair so I do kind of use the Dyson ones more for like traveling because they're so light or like I said if I'm in a rush and I just want to fly through my hair like this like literally pick and go pick and go random sections where it's if I want my hair to look perfect and last for the week I'll go with the Dyson like whereas when I'm doing this now this won't last me it might last it tomorrow but it won't last me like 10 days you know what I mean because it was done and um, so much quicker and like that sort of stuff really freaks me out like those um little marks and I was such a GHD lover for ages. I had the thick head GHD when I had long hair and I adored it. Again, you couldn't curl your hair with it, but it was just brilliant for straightening. And then I moved to a Hot Tools, loved that as well. Then that like blew up where I left it turned on and it melted or something. And then I was like, what will I get? Will I get another GHD? And I genuinely was going to get one because I knew how much I loved the last one and then I saw a few people promoting the Dysons and I was like I'll look into it. There was 50 euro off the day I got it and then I saw Jen Atkin promoting it and she's just like the hair queen. And I saw Jodie Wood promoting it who I also love and Sabrina Hill and stuff and I was like if all these hair experts love it and think that it's worth the money and like the technology technological side of it and stuff is worth the money and I just thought one of the again like I said one of the major selling points to me wasn't the fact that it was cordless it was the fact that you could use it with the cord on and the fact that it's better for your hair that it doesn't get so hot you control over the temperature the flexing plates and stuff just because literally my hair has been bleached for the last like five years and like I spend a lot of money on keeping it in good condition and using good products and trying to use as little heat on it as possible especially when I'm trying to grow it out so I just thought it was a good idea for me to invest in a good quality strainer because I know a lot of people have the air wrap and personally I thought that that was much more better value for money because that's like 500 euro and you get like your strainer, your hair, no sorry, your straightening brush, two curling barrels, no is it four curling barrels? Like a hair dryer, there's so much more in it and like you'd pay nearly 200 euro these days for a hair dryer alone so I just thought that that was a lot better value for money and I even remember saying I'd never get a strainer for 500 euro. And then I was literally thinking, I was like, I got a blow dry that day for 30, got a blow dry the weekend after for 35, I got another blow dry another day for 15, and it was all adding up. And then with my getting my hair done as well, I was like, I'd actually be, obviously, the Dyson doesn't bleach my hair, but I was literally getting a water blow dry every weekend of the summer, so now I can, I know that I can like wash and do my hair myself and get the same kind of salon effect, which I could never do before. So it worked out well for me in that sense. And definitely when I break it down cost per use, it'll be worth the money to me, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, if that makes sense. I love them both. I think they both have pros and cons. Some of the cons of the Dyson is definitely that it's so heavy, that it runs out so fast. But the pros are that I definitely feel a lot less heat damage with it. This pro is that it's so lightweight and easy to use. I suppose a con is that the cord can get in the way if you're a bit bad at doing curls like me. I don't like that it gets so hot and you have no control over the heat. But like, this is a straightener, a really good straightener that was 270 euro and it does the job. So I think that they're both really great. They both have pros and cons. So let me know which one do you prefer. Um, I definitely would have gotten the air wrap instead of the Coralified longer hair, but I just knew with the air wrap it wouldn't be worth my time um, or time or money getting it because my hair is so short I wouldn't be able to do the curls. Another thing I want to mention about the platinum plates on this is that they actually prevent flyaways and kind of like making your hair staticky, which I meant I know I mentioned already, but that's a really important thing for me, especially because my hair is so blunt. I don't want there to be like flyaways or like kind of damaged hair 
is sticking out and stuff. And one major problem I have is this piece of hair that is usually the world's biggest cowlick. And I can usually only do it with a rolly brush and a hair dryer, but then it literally goes like this. And then when I straighten it, I if I'm ever in hairdressers and they're like, when I straighten your fringe on the side, I'm like, no, because it literally just flops there. My fringe has to have a bit of a bump in it. Um, and this piece as well, like it has to kind of go with the shape of my face. And I remember I was like, if this strainer can fix this issue for me, I'm sold. And I could because it was able to flatten out the crease without making it like very kind of limp looking. It gave it a bit of a bump, but at the end rather than at the top, you can see there's no flyaways there and it'll literally just stay like that. So again, I was like, this is what I need. But you know what I was saying, guys? A straightener is a straightener at the end of the day and I would recommend both of them. I use both of them, but I would recommend them to different people and for different things. Like I would never bring this one traveling with me um, or if I was in a rush because it's just too heavy to be whipping around my head or packaging because it's so clumpy. But then I wouldn't use that one if I want my hair to last for the week. It'll last me a night or two, but then I'll have to do it again. And I don't want to be putting 185 degrees heat on my hair all of the time when I can put 165 on my hair once every 10 days. So you know what I mean? They, they're both extremely good um, strainers. So they're the two best brands of strainers you can get. But I would recommend them to different people at different times for different things. So hopefully that makes sense. I do love them both though. Um, I bought this out of my own money. I probably should have said this to start. I bought this out of my own money and I had the two GHGs kindly gifted to me, which was extremely generous. I remember when the day they came in the doors, I was like, oh my God, because I am such a big GHD fan and I've bought GHGs for years. And like I said, I will buy one again. I think, and I don't want to say you need two because no one needs two straighteners, but I love having two because my hair is so thick. It doesn't look thick, but it is so thick and I love this for like I said when I'm like I could do with a hair dry a hairdresser's blow dry today and if I don't get one I can just do this myself whereas if I'm running out the door and I literally just want my hair to be done quick and easy the GHG is the way ahead or when I'm traveling like I said so I do love them and they're very different as well in the sense of what they do and obviously the price point and the weight and how they look and everything but at the end of the day if you're just looking for a straightener to straighten your hair like they do give you the exact same finish at the end of the day so it's up to yourself of how much you want to spend and the reason why you want a straightener and if you want it to be like I you know what I would um, kind of compare this to getting like your six six week blow dry of like you don't have to touch your hair afterwards like it's more expensive than just getting a normal blow, blow dry but your hair is done for a longer time. That's how I would describe this. Whereas I use the GHD as like my running out the door, I need to fix it, or my quick and easy fix. So I absolutely love them both. I'll always use them both um, and I'd buy them both again. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of insight of which one is best for you, which one you would prefer. Do let me know if you have any questions. I would also say that this one is better for maybe like normal to thinner hair, whereas the Dyson is better for thicker hair just because you have more control over the heat settings and stuff. But then again, like I said, see there's pros and cons to everything that I'm saying. Then that's a lot heavier and takes longer to go around your whole head. So you do have to to um, kind of feel them both, even try them both out if you can. But yeah, they're both exceptionally good hair straighteners and I hope this review was helpful. I kind of give you an insight into how they feel, what they do, what they look like, the finished result, um, the price point, all that. And do let me know if you have any other questions. If I forgot anything, just pop it below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next video.